Uh, let's move from one leader to another, the leader of the Workers' Party of Britain, George Galloway, uh, joins me now. Uh, George, uh, very warm welcome to you. Thanks for your Hi. time. Appreciate it as ever. Thank you. Welcome. Um, OK, uh, from Monday, football matches, big crowds again. If you are one of those hospitality workers who run a business through what ought to have been a very busy hogmanay, you may rather feel you've missed the boat. Will you be left with a sense that throughout the course of the pandemic, certainly latterly, you've been led by a First Minister who has been overcautious when it comes to this pandemic? Or do we take a more sympathetic view? It's an incredibly difficult balance to strike. If it was over caution, I would be more sympathetic, but it's political posturing. She called it wrong, and whatever else he's got wrong, Boris Johnson called it right a week after I did, uh, on the basis of the South African experience. Omicron was the variant we'd been waiting for and would quickly become hegemonic, uh, would be far more widespread, but far less deadly. And Boris Johnson acted on that instinct, on that evidence, and he was right. So England, including Carlisle, by the way, not that uh, far away, uh, had a bumper New Year period, including a lot of Scottish customers, where Scottish hospitality was completely devastated. Now, we're being asked to believe, Colin, that uh, only 500 people can attend a match on Saturday but 50,000 can attend a match from Monday. What's the science of that? It's completely ridiculous. This is a huge climb down, a U-turn by Nicola Sturgeon. Only GB News will call it out as that because I'm afraid the Scottish media has been Finlandized by uh, the Scottish nationalist government and hardly says boo to Mrs. Sturgeon's goose. But they were saying just two weeks ago, 10 days ago, that mass gatherings would continue to be restricted until April. And it was only the prospect of games, including Six Nations games, actually moving to England uh, that uh, concentrated their mind wonderfully. The people in Scotland are saying enough is enough. We've lost enough through all of this. And the posturing is about being different from the government in London. Has nothing to do with public health, nothing to do with COVID-19. If it wasn't a coronavirus, it would be something else. It's all about striking a pose that Scotland is another country, a separate country, a foreign country to the rest of this small island. Uh, you mentioned something else, George. Let's, let's talk about something else. We've dedicated most of what feels like the last two hours to talking about COVID. So we'll just park that for now, important subject, though it undoubtedly is, and one that gets a lot of our viewers going. Uh, Neil McLennan quoted in uh, a, a column today in the Herald newspaper, uh, educationalist of great repute in Scotland, uh, inveighing against the reforms of the SNP, saying not only have we, uh, as the SNP government, produced poor results, to put it mildly, in those PISA international league tables and things like science and maths. But it's also infected the curriculum with nationalism, and it's turning young Scots into more parochial people. What say you? It's absolutely true. It's a, a parish pump mentality uh, where uh, pigeon English is encouraged uh, because uh, it's said to be more authentic, though having been born and grown up in Scotland, living in it most of my life, I would never dream of speaking, certainly in public, to you on television, in the kind of pidgin English that our children are being taught in schools. English is our greatest asset as a country, and yet it's being deliberately wasted here with bilingual signs and uh, doggerel Scottish uh, becoming ever more prevalent in parts of the media, including the BBC, paid for by the uh, government and uh, the Treasury in London through the licence fee and so on. So it's a big mess. And for Professor Mackay to say so, a man of his magisterial authority, is very, very powerful indeed. Although only those Scots who buy the Herald, which is precious few, or listen to GB News, will even know about this. And that's the great, great tragedy. 
We were a country whose education system was famous throughout the world. Now we're infamous. We've gone from top of the league into the bargain basement in terms of output, in terms of exam passes, and the rounded, worldly people like myself and Andrew Neil and other people like us that it once produced. Can I talk about wokeness? Just before the commercial break, George, we had an item from Lynn Lithgow. Uh, you may be familiar with the story. Uh, for those people mm. of a sensitive nature, I'll, 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 there's a warning around the language. Do I need to even do that? No, not really. It's, it's a pub called The Black Bitch. It's named after a, after a dog. There's a campaign. There has been a campaign to get the name removed. Green King, the brewery, will probably cave into it. Now, I mention this not actually because it's got anything to do with the SNP necessarily. This is a matter for the, the customers, the patrons of this pub and Green King. But it feels like it sits in a bigger... It's suspended in a, in, yeah. in a bigger context. And that is the stories that we keep on doing here on GB News week after week after week. And they leave me puzzled because you write about it frequently, you post uh, many Twitter messages about it, that Wokewood's drift of the Scottish culture, led by the SNP. Why, if, if that is true and people find it so objectionable, why are they not punished at the ballot box? Because that's how democracies work, isn't it? If people find sex surveys for primary school kids, actually for kids as young as 14, objectionable, then you vote out the people responsible for them. Well, because of a divided opposition, Colin, uh, fewer than a third of the Scottish people vote for the nationalist Green Front, uh, but they get into power because the others uh, divide their votes amongst other parties that don't support separatism, at least uh, nominally in the case of Scottish Labour. Uh, and as a result of that divided uh, polity, uh, the SNP uh, romp home and pick up most of the seats, though not even a majority of the seats, not this time, nor the last time, just the largest number of them sufficient to form a government. But it is odd, you're right, we don't have time to go into it, but this douce Presbyterian country with a 20% uh, minority of, uh, of devout and rather conservative Roman Catholics has become the rainbow plus capital of the world. And they boast about it. Uh, the rainbow plus, I'm not just talking about LGBT, but I'm talking about T plus Q plus all the other add-ons. Uh, they, they, they glory in uh, all of this. And the pub issue is located in that. Uh, this pub is called after a dog a female dog, the clue being in the signage above the door, the clue being in the statue in the town. The fine people of Linlithgow, represented for so long and so well by my late and great colleague, Tam Daliel, the idea that this pub would have something to do with racism is deeply offensive. Now, I'm a teetotaler, Colin, as you know. I don't go into pubs. Uh, but if I did, it certainly wouldn't be a Green King pub. <laughs> Tamdale, who brought us the West Lothian question, didn't he? There is a new West Lothian question, indeed. which you probably couldn't have imagined. It George, 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 we have to leave it there. Absolute pleasure, as always. And we're actually going to be talking about the Pope Thank very you. soon, who was invaded against cancel culture. Our thanks to George Galloway, as ever.